Okay, so today we're going to talk about the basic principles of brewing. Understanding how coffee and water interact means that you can apply these principles to all your home brewing methods. So that way, it doesn't matter whether you prefer French presses or aero presses or Chemexes, pour overs, mocha pots, espresso. Understanding how these principles work and how you can balance the flavors will ultimately give you a better tasting cup of coffee. So let's start with the two ingredients, coffee and water. Now with water, when we consider that a cup of filter coffee is over 98% water, it's no wonder that paying particular attention to this can really have a dramatic impact on how good or bad that cup of coffee tastes. Now the cafes out there on the high street will be using rather expensive commercial water filtration systems. We don't need any of that at home. All we need is a good bottled water filter. So now let's take a look at the coffee itself. All we're trying to do when we brew a good cup of coffee is brew a balanced cup. A cup that isn't overly bitter, isn't overly weak, sour or acidic and has some nice sweetness and a nice balance of good pleasurable flavours. So we can do that by extracting more from the coffee or less from the coffee to achieve that balance. And there are a few ways that we can do this. First of all, let's look at the temperature of the water. The hotter the water, the more effective a solvent it will be. So using hotter water will extract the coffee faster. So if you happen to have a temperature control kettle, then play around with the temperatures and notice that the hotter you make the water, using the same brewing process, you will extract more. Then we have the time. The length of time that the coffee and water are in contact with each other will increase extraction. So immersion brewers like uh, cafetiers or uh, aeropresses, the longer the coffee and the water is steeping together, the more flavor will extract. And then there's turbulence. Creating turbulence, so stirring the coffee in a circular motion, like in a, in a French press, or when you're doing a pour over, pouring the coffee in a circular motion, that's creating turbulence. And turbulence is also a really important part. More turbulence means more extraction. Hotter water, more extraction. Longer contact time, more extraction. Finally, let's talk about grind size. If you're able to grind your coffee from whole bean, fresh, then you'll get a, immediately a much better tasting cup of coffee. But understanding how coarse or fine you need to grind will really help your home brewing. So let's have a look at a few common brewing methods and their corresponding grind sizes, just as a starting off point. So we'll start off here with a French press cafetiere. So we use quite a, a coarse grind for this. This is because this is an immersion brewer and the coffee and water are steeping together uh, for several minutes. Uh, so if you have a look here, obviously, this is the similar sort of consistency to uh, Demerara sugar, uh, quite coarse. We then move on to gravity brewers or pour overs where water passes through the coffee. You've got something that's a little bit finer. Uh, we just want to slow that extraction rate down a little bit. So this is something maybe a little bit more like granulated sugar uh, for a two cup and then slightly finer for a one cup. And by contrast, espresso here, where you've got uh, pressurized water forcing itself through coffee, much, much finer, more like a powder. So there we have it guys, a real whistle stop tour of the basic principles of brewing. I hope that made some sense and I hope that you can take some of these principles and a bit of this understanding and apply it to your cups of coffee at home and hopefully get a better tasting brew. I'll see you next time.